Hello everyone, happy new year and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be discussing a tool that has been the most central part of my research process since 2014 when I started investing. Now, this is a tool that has probably added, you know, maybe more than 80% of the value in my entire research. And the craziest part is that I've not paid a single rupee to use this tool ever. Right. So thank you and kudos to the founders of Screener.in. In this video series, there are going to be two parts and we're basically discussing how to use Screener.in effectively and seamlessly integrating it into our research process, regardless of whether we're a complete beginner or we've been investing for many, many years, regardless of whether we're a hobby investor or we consider ourselves to be active investors. Right. So. With that said, let's get on with it. But before we get on to actually discussing the tool, I have a simple request. As always, please consider subscribing, hit the like button. Uh, it helps us to stay motivated and continue working hard. So with that said, let's move on to discussing the tool. So this video is going to be broken down into two parts further, level one and level two. And each level is going to be further subdivided into mini chapters. So Think of this video as uh, a video uh, kind of book and you can go to specific parts in the video that you find useful. If you find certain parts are not useful, you can always skip, right? Level one is going to be for complete beginners, people who have either used screener maybe once or twice, uh, but are not very familiar with it. So we're going to start up from, from the ground up and level two is going to be more intermediate. Level three we're discussing, we're going to be discussing in the second video uh, in this series. So before we actually discuss, uh, you know, specifically talk about the tool, it's very impo important to understand where this tool fits in because in the past I've noticed uh, as you're a new investor, you can confuse screening stocks with actually finding undervalued uh, companies. And I think there's a big, big difference between the two. And um, so we want to understand where screener.in fits into our overall process, right? To understand that, I've created a little mind map and this should give you a good idea of where screener.in is useful and where it's not. So let's say your stock research process looks something like this. First, you want to screen, right? And this is a very, very important part of the entire process. And this is the first step, right? But, but this is only the first step. However important uh, it is, it is the starting point. Now, screener.in, you know, of course, is very, very useful at this point in time. What it does is it solves a very fundamental problem. You have, you know, 3,000, 5,000, 6,000, thousands of stocks listed on the Indian uh, stock exchanges. And obviously, we don't have the kind of time to be able to, you know, look into many uh, uh, of these stocks, especially if you're not somebody who's sitting down for, you know, the full day and actually researching. If you're a hobby investor, even if you're an active investor, you spend two, three hours a day, still, you need to, you know, filter down that, uh, that, that list. Um, one mistake that people make over here is, and even on YouTube, you'll see some videos there's, you know, that are titled how to find undervalued stocks. And they just so, uh, show the screening part of the video. I think uh, that's an oversimplification. And uh, it is, in my humble opinion, maybe not the right way, right? But it is a starting point. So once you have screened out of the thousands of stocks, maybe you get down to a list of 50 stocks or 100 stocks. And that is your starting point, right? And Screener helps you to do that very, very effectively. We're going to see that how, right? The second part is once you have taken those list of stocks, you're still going to be looking further and comparing it to the benchmarks that you have set. Maybe you have a philosophy, maybe you follow Warren Buffett, maybe you follow Peter Lynch, maybe you follow a combination, a lot of these, uh, you know, different philosophies, which are kind of similar fundamentally, but, you know, then you need to further move that list of stocks from a watch list of let's say 100 stocks to then going one step further you want to know more about the industry because it's not just about the company you want to know a lot more about how the company fits in to the overall uh, in in the overall game in the overall industry you want to look at more into the business you know uh, what are the products like uh, you know how uh, their market share, uh, you know, comparative analysis, a lot of comparative strategy, a lot of uh, that kind of stuff. And this is where screener.in will not be useful for you. Uh, management analysis, again, to an extent, you can learn a lot from, you know, looking at the quantitative part. Uh, 
but you might have to go off screen or look at it uh, you know maybe go to the annual report maybe uh, you know, look at other sources of information. Third is valuation. Again, here screener is not going to be useful, right? Let's be very clear. And valuation is kind of an art, kind of science, you know, so uh, and that can be a topic for another video. But let's say if uh, your estimate of the value is less than fair value, plus you have a margin of safety, maybe you invest in the company, right? If the valuation is much more than the fair value, but you still think that the business is great, you add it to the watch list, right? And watch lists are a very important feature of uh, the screener tool, right? Once you have invested, then of course, you might want to continue buying depending on, you know, six months later, one year later, how the business is progressing. You might want to hold, you know, continue to hold the position, but not invest more, or you might want to sell. Based on that, whatever the outcome is, you learn, you know, from the experience over time again and again, year after year, month after month. And then based on those outcomes, you will then learn and optimize, optimize the whole process coming back to step number one, right? So fundamentally, screener.in is extremely useful in two steps, right? Uh, over here in the first part, the screening part, and then uh, somewhere around here, watch list and uh, you know, we can call it tracking, right? So companies you have invested in and companies you haven't invested in, but are interesting and great businesses. So screening and tracking, those are two most important functions of screener, right? With that said, let's come back to actually the tool and let's start discussing that. So this is the basic screen to start off with. You can change the theme. Let's, you know, keep it light. Uh, you can go to auto. Um, because it's evening over here, it automatically switches to a darker theme if I do auto, but let's keep it light, right? So this is the starting point. So now we're at the starting point of using screener.in. The first thing is that if you notice on the top right, uh, the login option is there and get a free account. Now you could scroll around and check out the, the tool without having to uh, log in. But at some point, if you're uh, going to be using this tool and I think it's super useful, you might as well get a free account, right? It's not a big deal. They don't, I haven't received a single email from them trying to push to, to buy the upgrade version. So uh, these guys are on another wavelength when it comes to that. So you don't need to worry about your email and all that. Just go ahead and uh, you know create a free account, not a big deal. Uh, since I already have an account, I'm going to log in using my existing account and here we are right so the first thing we want to look at is the screens right and as we discussed this is going to be the first part of our research process the step number one of our research process now even screening can be based on many different types of criteria right so these these are the more um, uh, these are my own screens right that i've created in the past there are popular themes you know, you can have screens based on that. You can have uh, popular formulas, the magic formula based on uh, the book by Joel Greenblatt. It's a great book. You can check it out. Coffee can portfolio based on Saurabh Mukherjee's uh, Petrovsky scan. You know, uh, then you can have screens based on price and volume. You can have based on quarterly quarterly results. You can have valuation screens. You can have popular uh, stock screens. So, you know, there are many different ways to segment the type of screen, but this is basically where you want to click click on screens to get to this page and this is where you can either uh, use an existing screen so for example if i click on magic formula we have this is created by sunil um, you can click on sunil sunil joined about 11 years ago right so he has been on the platform for 11 years and about six seven months uh, there are 111 stocks in this uh, based on this screening process uh, based on his screening cr criteria, based on the magic formula. So, you know, this is one of them. Now, we what if we want to create our own screen, right? Based on parameters that we're comfortable with and uh, the way we want to go about things. So you click on create new screen. And, you know, let's say we have sales growth over the last three years. We want uh, last three years. We want greater than 15%. Well, it's at 12 percent and uh, we want return on equity on equity average over the last five years to be greater than 15 percent right return on capital employed over the last five years you know if you want it to be greater than 15 percent and 
Um, and finally, let's say market capitalization. You want, let's say you only want to deal with companies that have a market capitalization of more than 500 crores, right? So you want to add and at the end of every query except the last one, right? So you run this query, you have 210 companies, right? So, you know, uh, one thing that we need to keep in mind when we are screening is you have to decide how strict or how, uh, you know, lenient you want to be on the screening, uh, the, the, the standards, right? Because if you're, too, uh, if you're too stringent, you'll have too few companies if you're too strict, uh, if you're too lenient, you might have too many companies. So maybe 210, uh, maybe I want to reduce this further to, uh, you know, around 100 or 50 companies. So let's say I want uh, debt to equity uh, to be less than 0.5%, right? So let's do that. So from 210, it's reduced to 151 results, right? Let's say I want to further reduce it and uh, what can we screen further on? Let's say I want promoter shareholding to be greater than, you know, 60%. This is going to be a very stringent one. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now you have 69 results. So that's almost cut by more than 50%. And let's say 69 is a perfect starting point for you. You're saying, okay, this is a you know great place to start. And there you have it. You have created your own screen. Okay, now even within the screen, you can filter based on particular industries. This is important for people who are from particular industries and maybe you understand your industry well. And because it's still 69 companies, you might want to start off uh, with companies that you're familiar with. So let's say if you're an IT or software engineer, you want to start off with companies that are within that domain because maybe, you know, you understand that industry much better. I mean, not maybe, it's very likely that you will understand that particular industry better than let's say uh, a pharmaceutical uh, company, right? So similarly, you can filter that down. Now, in order to use this feature, uh, you need to upgrade, right? So that's something that uh, Personally, I have not found, uh, I have not uh, upgraded up till now, but recently I have started to wonder, you know, uh, then maybe uh, I would like to do that. Anyway, uh, you can also export. If you want to export again, you need to upgrade, right? Um, you can edit the columns. So let's say you want other uh, ratios to show up. And these are the you can filter, uh, you can, you know, add different ratios based on whether they're on the annual PL, they're based on the balance sheet, they're based on cash flows, uh, or you can simply start off with the most used. So let's say um, we want to add sales as well, and we want to add dividend yield as well, price to book value, maybe not so important, you know, just an example, and you save the columns. So now you have, you have uh, sales over here in absolute numbers and you have dividend yield over here somewhere as well right there you go dividend yield so these are the different modifications and changes you can do to your screen if you want to save this query you can save this we can say first principles um, investment academy and if you want to save that you just you know save query hello so you save that and there you have it, right? So this is a screen, uh, that's how you create it. This is going to be your starting watch list. Remember this part, right? This is the starting watch list. Now, this is all very basic stuff. Like we said, this is level one kind of stuff. And uh, you know, this is how it works. If you want to get email updates on the companies that you have created a screen with, you can click on get email updates and alerts have been activated in case you feel that there are too many emails that you're receiving on your email you want to disable, you can go to settings, uh, you can go to email alerts and you can disable from here, right? So you go to settings, email alerts, and you can enable again or disable, right? So that's, that's basically uh, the basics of uh, creating a screen, saving a screen, making modifications to the screen, you know, this is the starting point. And this 
is where screener.in adds immense immense value as step number one of the entire stock research uh, process so a very common question that most people have is that is there an app for screener.in and while they don't have an app uh, if you go to the website on your mobile it's very user friendly on all mobile devices uh, I usually use it on a computer but I have tried it on the mobile and I think it's pretty seamless of course um, you know there are it's it's not going to be as um, you know easy to use as a computer screen but it does the job and I think as far as mobile UI goes it's pretty seamless it's pretty on point so I think at this point level one is more or less complete let's move on to level two this is the part where we will pick a particular company go on to the page um, the, uh, for that particular company and look at the different sections how to use those different sections what we can learn from those different sections all of that right so since we've already created this screen let's use this as a starting point and let's pick one company let's say easy trip planners right uh, EMT and uh, personally actually I've uh, used this uh, you know used their platform quite a lot to book uh, flights and uh, I think they they're doing a good job uh, let's see what is happening right so this section is where a summary of the ratios uh, comes up right um, and if you look at market cap 9000 crores stock price to earning 71 times um, I think by most standards this would be considered very very expensive but again uh, there are growth investors who argue if the company is growing at say 30 40 50 times then maybe a 71 might be justified so we won't get into that but you know conventionally i think <laughs> there is a high probability that this would be on the higher valuation side um roc is 65 percent roe is 52 percent so this is obviously very very excellent as a business roc and roe uh, you know tell a lot about the efficiency and i think uh, in that sense I think EMT is doing a great job. Then you have dividend yield. They barely pay any dividend, probably because they're a growing company. Uh, you have earnings yield, which again, we can talk uh, later. So these are the ratios that show up. Now, if you want to make changes to this section and maybe you want to see particular ratios uh, for every company, according to you, uh, again, you can click on uh, the edit ratios and you can add you know, different ratios uh, from here. Maybe you can, you know, you can start off with using the most used or you can use a balance sheet or you can use a cash flow. Let's check out cash flow, right? Investing cash flow. So free cash flow. Okay. Let's say free cash flow for three years. Let's add that save quick ratios and we should be able to free cash flow for the last three years is 137 crores, right? So this is how you can modify. On the right hand side, obviously there are descriptions. And I think this is a feature they've added, if I'm not wrong, maybe a year or two back. They did not have this when I started using the platform. And I think it's pretty cool. It's uh, pretty useful. Uh, you have an about, a basic description. You have the key points, you know, leading OTA firm uh, and the only profitable uh, player as far as, uh, you know, online uh, travel businesses are concerned largest and only profitable company in the online travel portal in india uh, they got listed on this this uh, at 10 percent premium so you can find a lot of information about the company specifically then their acquisitions and partnerships you can also check out the source by clicking on uh, you know these numbers uh, geographical expansion expansion revenue mix i think this is pretty useful you want to know where the revenue is coming from you know what geographies what products all of that they have the largest network agent what is the growth strategy so it's kind of like a you know summarized version of what the company is up to so they have litigations going on as well uh, bonuses splits all of that personally i find this section to be pretty useful it gives you a nice little gist uh, you know within a couple of minutes um, maybe you want to add this company to a particular or a different watch list I have another uh, watch list called the potentials maybe I'll add you know uh, to that list maybe not that's up to me uh, this feature export to excel excel is the turbo feature available and you know, in screen dot in and this uh, this feature alone makes screener dot in so so different from every uh, screener platform out there and we'll but we'll get to this later uh, and i think this is going to be absolutely absolutely useful so that was the first section 
If you move down, the second section is basically stock price. You have volume data, price data. Uh, you have 50 DMA, 200 DMA, uh, you know, all of that. On the right hand side, you can also change for P ratio. You know, if you want to check that out again, it was 145 on 20th August 2021 has now come down to around 70 as earnings has have increased. You can also look at some other commonly used uh, ratios. Price to book value is you know, 30 times um, market cap to sales again is around uh, 6.9 times pretty I mean fairly exorbitant so these are uh, these are some of the uh, ratios that you can look at from here you can also change the timeline as is you know given here uh, another important and useful feature within this particular section of the screener is you can create price alerts you know price and price to earning alerts so let's say the currently uh, the price of the stock is 52 rupees you know you want to get a notification an email alert when it goes below say 40 you know if it does um, note for reminder gone below 40 okay and you let's say you get excited about that you know, okay so now i'm going to receive an email when the price uh, goes below 40 if it goes below 40 when it goes below 40 right um, again you can ask for alerts at different points price falls below this price goes above uh, price falls below 200 dma so there are the different uh, you know uh, alerts that you can create you can also create an alert based on price to earnings currently if it's 71.29 let's say a p falls below 25 there you go right for whatever reason if that happens great save i'll get an email alert and um, again of course you have to be uh, you know available on your email as well um, so that is obviously you know there but yeah you can create different screens so here i can see i have three different screens another feature that i have missed out is the notebook so you know i've used them i created a note for whatever reason if you have certain notes you're reading and you you know you have a link that you read or something like that you want you can paste it here it kind of becomes your notebook your um uh, you know for for the stock and you can review it later it can be useful right so, so these are the first two sections that we have covered this third section also interesting personally i do not find this very very uh, useful it doesn't really give a lot of i mean i don't know it, it, it doesn't add a lot of value uh, to my thinking but you know it's there it's something nothing wrong with it uh, company is all, uh, almost debt free. Company is expected to give a good quarter. Great. Company has done a good profit growth, 39% over the last five years. Return on equity is 48%. Debtor days has improved. Uh, the cons, again, stock is trading at 30 times its book value. So fair enough. Whatever. It's, you know, some information. The fourth one is, again, I think very, very useful because it uh, allows you to look at and compare other companies, right? So you have Thomas Cook, which is, I thought they'd gone bankrupt if I'm not wrong, but um, yeah, no, they're there. They're doing, they're surviving. Uh, anyway, so there are different, uh, uh, you know, competitors within the travel agencies uh, industry, Transcope, Croington, Make My Trip again is a pretty popular player. I'm sure if you've booked flights at some point, you might have used them or you might have used Ease My Trip. The great thing about this company is they don't use convenient, uh, charge conveniency. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, Make My Trip is not listed. So you won't find that here, but these are different other, other players that are listed and uh, that are in the same space, right? So you could compare them based on ROA, you can, can compare them sales quarter. Again, if you want to add some other features that are not there, the same page opens up. Uh, you can add different, uh, let's say how much debt, debt to equity maybe you want to add. So if you don't find it there, you can say debt to equity, it's already added. Um, you know, so you can add different ratios from here, right? Let's say operating profit margin okay save column and now you can compare the opm of these different players so emd is doing 48 percent all these other guys are barely getting by so yeah 
that's that so far so one last thing i want to add to this peer comparison section uh, there is a feature in another screener which uh, screener dot in does not have but it is an extremely useful feature when it comes to comparing uh, comparing peer companies and the reason why is because it gives a graphical representation of whatever we're trying to compare so if you're comparing let's say the sales or the sales growth or the dividend yield or the net profit margin or the operating profit margin whatever that number is we can actually graphically uh, you know compare different companies in uh, tijori finance and that's another screener that i've been using i started using one year back and uh, just to give you an example of uh, how important this feature is in this screener um, let me just open up the same company easy easy trip planners you try that so i know i'm digressing from screen dot into another ticket but look uh, this is a feature that i find very useful and that's uh, one of the main reasons why i started using this one in uh, along with screen dot in so let's say you have uh, sales okay no i want to look at operating profit margins okay let's say we we want to look at debt to equity ratio right so in this case easy trip planners has pretty much minimal debt okay let's say we want to compare it with thomas cook okay thomas cook india you know debt still low let's say you want to compare it with another travel company uh, sailani tours and travels debt debt to equity of 1.8 right so it helps in uh, giving a graphical representation of how that number is moving versus the Uh, peers versus competitors. So I think that's a great feature in Tijori Finance. But again, coming back, the next section is quarterly results. For me, when initially going through uh, the first screening uh, analysis, quarterly results are not that important, so I don't normally look at them. Uh, but yeah, you can find the quarterly numbers over here. You can also click on this, and uh, quarterly results will show up. Uh, the filing that the company has done. with the stock exchanges uh so here we're looking at profit and loss uh this is more on yearly basis and by the way this is another company gujarat themis okay let's move back to easy trip planners okay yeah so all right so again we can switch between standalone and consolidated so yes yeah, standalone numbers look something like this from 2011 209 rupees 209 crores of sales to 333 right operating profit margin right so so let's look at this right operating profit margin okay fine it's 111 you know it's varying a lot uh but we don't know how it's comparing to other competitors and that's why i think uh, you know screener dot in really adds a lot of value so if we look at operating profit margin in this one let's just compare thomas cook again yeah so there you go so thomas cook uh, operating margins are 4% 3% you know whatever and easy trip planners it's been going up up and up right so that's uh, pretty phenomenal obviously we want to find out more in the you know further steps why this is happening how sustainable it is uh, and all of those kinds of questions right so this is um, uh, a great feature of tijori finance coming back um, we have operating profit margin the whole income statement standard layout another shortcoming uh, in screener dot in is that it does not show the financials of a uh, nbfc or a bank in the right format so this format sales minus expenses operating profit is for a you know every other type of company but does not work for uh, a bank right so for example if i open kotak mahindra bank unless they have corrected that yeah no okay so slightly different but again still does not really reflect the true picture uh the income statement of a bank uh, does not look like this but yeah it's i mean they have tried to add like the financing profit financing margin and all that but this is really confusing if you're trying to analyze banks and nbfcs which make up nearly 35 40% of the overall stock market value uh screen dot in would not be useful simply um uh, as simple as that but coming back to the 
Okay, easy trip planners. Then you come to the balance sheet section. Again, pretty standard. Uh, you can expand share capital, mein, equity capital, kitna hai, and you know, uh, fixed income. You have all the different breakdown. You can do all of that. The next section is cash flows, operating cash flow, investing, financing cash flow, uh, free cash flow, which is a super, super important uh, metric when it comes to analyzing companies is not given here. And uh, that, again, is uh, a, you know, a key feature. So to be able to calculate free cash flows and many other ratios that are super important, but are not given in the standard format. That's where this turbo feature of screener.in comes in, which is export to Excel. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, this part in a lot of depth, depth along with um, also the key metrics. For example, why is uh, operating uh, profit margin important? What should, what should you look for when you're analyzing the operating profit margin? What are the other important data points and uh, why are they important? So all of that we'll talk about in the level three which is the second video in this series, right? And lastly, you have uh, ratios, you know, where this show ROCE and uh, shareholding pattern, you know, promoters are still holding 75%, which is pretty substantial. Another interesting thing I noticed for this company specifically was FIIs have reduced from 4.15 to 2.52, DIIs have reduced from 11 to 2.44, but the public has increased from 9.9 to 20.5, right? Uh, this, this was a pattern that uh, was visible in Yes Bank as well um, before the whole bailout situation happened. So, yeah. Um, and this last section, this is the last section and you have documents. You can search for the recent document. You can search for the important document. Um, you can take, you know, you use different keywords to search. If you look at all, if you want to look at all the filings the company has done, you can click on this and this will open on the BSE page where all the filings the company has done with the stock exchange. This section is again for uh, the quarterly con calls and the quarterly presentations that a company gives up. One thing that is missing over here, if I look at this company or maybe let's say look at this one, uh, the credit rating. So that was missing in easy trip planners because they don't have a lot of debt or I believe or either that uh, they do actually have debt, but uh, the credit rating document has not been uploaded in that section. So and this document is super, super important. Uh, it can save so much time. We can this two, three page document usually can add so much value and give you such a much, much better understanding of what's happening in the business. So you have experience and qualified promoters, whatever niche product, you know, this can be important, raw material sourcing, healthy profit margins, you know, capital structure, what are the weaknesses? They have a moderate scale of uh, operations compared to, you know, their competitors. It's a working capital, intensive nature of operation, project funding. So yeah, you end up learning a lot by reading these credit uh, reports. And I think this is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and you should read this if you're interested in a company. So with that said, I think we've covered pretty much everything there is to cover on the level one and the level two uh, of uh, how to use Screener effectively. In the level three, as we discussed, we're going to uh, learn how to use this turbo feature. And we're going to discuss uh, there is a you know, a template that we've developed, which can really, really, really take your analysis to the next level, save you tons of time and uh, give you insights that are absolutely, absolutely next level. And this feature in screener.in is the unique feature that, you know, really separates uh, this platform from all the other ones. So with that said, I hope this video was useful. Um, if you're still listening, thank you very much. Please consider subscribing and stay tuned for the part two in this series.